our first uh, our first conversation uh, for the new Young Playwrights site here is Tara Henderson. Hi, Tara. Hi. Hi, How it's good you? to see you. I'm wonderful. I'm even better now seeing you and uh, getting to collaborate together again. I know it's been um, uh, a while since we've had the chance to collaborate, and I think probably we, you and I have probably collaborated on young playwrights' work more than anybody else I'm planning to talk to these first couple of days. It's been a yeah, <laughs> it's been a, a been yeah. a wonderful process and in quite some time. So and I think um, I think with the New Jersey Young Playwrights Festival or either either the one, or maybe the one in Madison, you had the record for a while too of the most consecutive participation, right? Either as an actor or as a teaching artist. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Or wearing many hats in some years, which was always fun too. I loved going back and performing in my students' plays as well. Yeah, no, that's always a good time. That's and that's actually one of the reasons why I wanted to have these conversations because um, you know, as you know, as we talked about. Um, throughout that time, it's always important to uh, to have all those hats um, when you're creating work, especially given uh, the time that we're living in right now, where uh, we're not quite sure where the work is, you know, which we talked about before recording, or um, you know what what we're going to need to do or know how to do um, as we go. So, um, but we'll get into that uh, first. If if you could just uh, let the folks at home know uh, a little bit about who you are, what you, what you're currently doing, uh, however you want to talk about that, um, you know, what your work is, or, or where you came from, or how you got started, up to you. Okay, sure, great. Uh, well, hi everybody, my name is Tara Henderson and I am a Jersey girl, born and bred. I grew up doing theater. I first fell in love with theater in my church musicals. Uh, my grandparents and my mother were in the church choir, so I've always had a love for singing and performing. I wanted to just be like them when I was a little kid and uh, I got the bug at quite an early age. And uh, when I was five years old, my parents took me to see my first Broadway show which was a chorus line and little did they know it was not um, necessarily an appropriate show for a five-year-old, but that was a <laughs> surprise about halfway through the show. Um, my father was not very pleased because my mother just thought it was dancing people in gold costumes. Like how could that be wrong? So, um, but I looked at, looked at my mother uh, halfway through the show and I was like, this is what I want to do when I grow up. And she was like, okay, you're going to have to work really hard. And I said, all right. I said that this is, I want to be able to do what I love as for my living uh, and I never looked back. So I, I went to Montclair State and yep. um, it was a fantastic education. I still collaborate with a lot of the people that I went to school with, a lot of my professors even now, some of which are retired, which has been fantastic to be able to perform in some of their plays, uh, do readings. I'm, I'm still occasionally taking class with one of my mentors in her basement, um, which is fantastic and fun. And uh, we get to right. then sit around and chat about theater and life and everything afterwards, which has been a lot of fun. And I've done a lot of work in New York off Broadway. I've done a lot of work with the Jersey theaters. And uh, it was through Montclair State that I was so fortunate to, to meet Jim and have had the time of my life collaborating with you in so many wonderful facets. Prior to everything shutting down, I uh, was also the queen at Medieval Times. I still am. Uh, I'm just uh, on a sabbatical, uh, on a little a queen siesta, I guess you could say. And uh, that's been a fantastic gig for me. I've gotten to do some really wonderful work. I was on the Jimmy Fallon show. I've gotten to sing the national anthem at multiple ballparks. Um, I worked with the Impractical Jokers, like all these people that uh -huh. I never thought I would collaborate with in that way. We were recently on the... Uh, cake competition show, Buddy versus Duff, which is fantastic. So I've gotten to meet and work with new people in different facets I never thought I would, uh, while still getting to perform in this great show. And it's been a wonderful gig for me uh, because it's flexible. I am able to do other shows, audition in other things, work on other films, TV, whatever it may be. And it's been great. So um, now I'm just kind of trying to use this time to the best of my ability, just like everybody else, to network to reconnect with colleagues and friends and uh, get ready for when everything gets back to work because when we get back to work uh, we're going to have a lot of important work ahead of us and i want to make sure that that i'm ready to to take it on yeah and the um the, i think the uh, the work in medieval times i think is fascinating because you, you've been there through a transition too it, i remember um I, we've gone maybe two or three times uh with my my family either my, my kids or um, with uh, nieces and nephews, and it was once a princess, mm -hmm. right? And then has uh, transferred to uh, transition over to now the queen runs the castle. Um, I'm actually uh, I'm hoping that I can have this year. I actually found uh, uh, share my screen. If you can, can you see this? Um, 
Oh, yeah. The picture. Oops, on the setback. Um, yes, the great, I remember, I think, it's been a while, and uh, I think we might have even come to see the show as McQueen. Um, yes, one did. day for my daughter's birthday or my niece's birthday, and then this mm -hmm. article came out shortly after that, uh, which was uh, which is pretty cool. What what can you talk about that a little bit? What's the transition been like from Princess to Queen? Oh, it's been phenomenal. I mean, I love being the princess, and uh, just like any show that you put you, know, that was probably the longest role I've ever played. Um, mm -hmm. It was several years. It was uh, I'm trying to think. It was probably five years I did that show. So it was the longest show oh, wow. I've ever done as princess. So I mean, of course, there's always that nostalgia of leaving a show. Um, mm -hmm. My mother always referred to it when my, like my post-show low. She, like I'd always get down after a show closes and, and I was like, what's going on? And she's like, Tara, you always get like this. You miss performing, it's the post-show low. And I was like, oh, that's right, okay. Um, but being the queen is just, it's been incredible. I learned how to ride a horse. I never thought yeah. I'd get paid to learn how to ride a horse by these fantastic professionals who are at the top of their field. Like you would pay, I can't imagine the amount of money it would have cost to learn how to ride a horse the way, the way I did it. It's just, it's phenomenal. And yeah. it's a great show. It's, I mean, I loved being the princess too, but this is just, it's been such a unique experience to help empower people of all ages, especially kids. Um, I think it's so important that people see themselves representative and represented in positive powerful roles so for young girls to see that and and the look that they look up at me when they see me after the show and it's just it's really it's really incredible i was blessed to have so many wonderful positive men mentors in my life especially strong women growing up my mother yeah. especially my grandmothers and to be able to give that back has just been um it's just been an incredible feeling because i i looked up to those artists and those people and and it helped fuel my desire to pursue acting, to pursue theater, to pursue the arts. Um, so I'm just happy to be able to give that back. It's been, it's been really great. Yeah. Now, do you, do you find you bring some of that, um, you know, having those role models in your life, do you find you, you bring some of that to the, the roles you do, or do you seek out certain um, gigs? Yeah, I, I do. I think, yeah. I think I've always been drawn to strong women characters. Like my mom, I remember one of the first, uh, like, novels that she expo introduced me to when I was young was Little Women and uh, you know mm -hmm. and when I times when I felt like I didn't fit in and she was like well look at Joe Joe didn't feel like she fit in and she didn't try to change who she was you know she's like you have to remember to be like Joe you're or you're not ordinary you can't you can't just fit in you shouldn't want to fit in so yeah. I I think so I've always um and and I guess because it's a quality I, I hold true to my heart it's just the type of roles I'm usually cast in so it's a uh, it's great. It's really, it's really powerful. So I'm, I'm really excited to be, to be able to be doing it. I, I miss it. I definitely miss being the queen. It's good. It's good to be queen. The rumors are true. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's good to know. And then hopefully, you know, when all this passes, it'll be, uh, I mean, who knows how long this is going to be, but uh, you know, we'll be back in there soon. And um, it's a great show. And I'll, I'll tell you too, the, the, the difference between uh, what I remember from it being uh, the king and the princess to, to what the show is now. Um, it, it's, it seems like a slight change. I mean, I don't, I don't know the, the scripting, you know, the, the way you do, but it, it seems like a lot of it was kept, but there is that, um, there is that emphasis on empowerment without it being over the top. You know, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's very subtle, but it's, it's definitely there. Um, and what's fascinating with that Vogue article too, is um, just looking at all the women, uh, not only playing the queen, but there are a couple of uh, falconers and uh, the horse trainers. And our horse, yeah, our horse the trainer. coordinators, right? Um, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. there's a lot of, um, which is really exciting. Yeah, Amanda Kenny, our head horse trainer, is uh, fantastic. So it is, it's really exciting to see um, how many ways are, um, you know, the women women are in, power, in positions of power, especially one of our queens is actually also, also one of our falconers. She does that in between. Oh, really? uh, yeah, uh, one of my fellow Montclair graduates actually one of my queen sisters she she uh was really interested and intrigued by it and they're like sure you could do you know you could do queen one show and then stay in falcon for uh for another show and so she's really enjoying that so it's it's really uh, cool that she's been uh, wearing many hats too so yeah and that you know one of the things too about one of these conversations uh you know we talked about this before is um you know if you we need to have those hats um to be able to do this this work i, I think um you know, we uh, just the world we're in now. You know, all the the pandemic aside, just 
all of the um, technology we have now to be able to create work on, on our own, it's, uh, it's, it's so much more reality than it was 10 years ago. Um, so I think, you know, where having those hats before was important to be able to find work. Now it's just like we have to have it to just be creative. Um, so I think it's great. And there's, there's a power in that too, uh, which is fun. But, but you um, had mentioned this too, that even with the Young Playwrights Festival, you're wearing many hats as an actor, as a, a teaching artist. Um, and you mentioned Montclair a couple of times. I think your class at Montclair was one of the first that, uh, college students that we brought into the festival. Oh, wow. Um, I didn't know one that. One of the things that I had wanted to do to try and yeah, yeah, I, I wanted to really try and like refresh the the acting core, and I felt too like um, for young people to well they write about themselves uh, whether they're it's it's themselves or character that's similar to themselves or the parents of them the parents say well it's not really me, um, which you you have experience with that too which we'll talk about um, yeah. free, I don't know if you remember that play yes <laughs> yeah <laughs> um, you know it's uh, yeah. So I just, I, I, one of the things I wanted to do and uh, when we brought you folks in was to get actors who uh, could relate, who the kids could relate to better. Um, you know, being, being right in college, you're, you're closer in age uh, to these kids than anybody else was. Um, yeah, and I, think, I think in your class, we probably had five or six of you um, yeah, there was a that bunch started of doing that work with it. us and then became teaching them. Yeah. Um, and then uh, how, did, how did we get you involved in the... Um, the teaching artist work. Did we get you right into playwriting first or did you do some acting workshops first? I don't remember that. No, process. I did. I studied under Danya Ramos. Uh, I was like her, okay. her, her assistant, um, her assistant teaching artist down in Cranford. And she's really, I mean, both Danya and through your tutelage or who I learned really the art of, I think I would like to think the crafting of the, the play, young playwriting program and how to, uh, cultivate it to, to kids so yeah she was she's fantastic and it's great I still still am in touch with Danya we still um we um both with both she and her husband Michael we've um you know done yeah. some work together some play readings and stuff like that so it's great it's been a great networking connection too yeah and that's um that's important I'm glad you said that uh, the, uh you've got to just you got to get a foot in the door right it sounds kind of silly right but you you, you take that work you, you um it was actually how I got started. You know, when I was in college, I started performing for kids, for kindergartners. Yeah. <laughs> of all things. That, if you want to learn how to you know, work real quick in front of an audience uh, that <laughs> yes. we're going to do, perform for some kindergartners. Um, so, uh, yeah, you know, and it's, it's good training. And, and it's, it is. It's a way to get started. You, you work with a professional theater company, and hopefully, hopefully you don't look back from there mm -hmm. um, and continue on. What... Uh, what, what do you think has been the biggest challenge that you've had to overcome as a, a theater artist, whether that's an actor, a teaching artist, a, someone who creates theater, anything at all? I think, um, I think two things. I think the, uh, the lapses in work as an actor, I think, you know, you come out of a theater program where you're working every day whether it be in class, whether it be in a directing project, whether it be in your main stage production, whatever it may be, you're, crafting your craft every day and it's amazing it's i miss that time of just i mean i'm i'm a i'm a i love learning i, I love school so like i i just enjoy growing as a person as an artist so then you get out into uh quote unquote the real world and you're not guaranteed to be cast anything you know um I remember my first couple of auditions being like well you know i mean by the time i was a senior at montclair it was like they knew what I could do. You know, my audition could be me, be so, so, and you know, um, it didn't, not that it didn't matter, but my, my reputation uh, preceded itself. And I think those first, that first year, it was a little hard to find your footing at times because you're, you don't have a reputation to proceed yourself yet. You mm -hmm. have to work for that. So you have to stick with it. And um, literally every, I mean, I've had auditions where I literally had someone call me in for a role where they still had my black and white headshot from <laughs> not shortly, not long after I graduated Montclair and I booked a gig from them. And, and this person said really? to me like, we liked you, you weren't right for this project, what we were casting at the time, but I kept you in my file and here you go. So uh, I think, I think that um, it's finding ways to continue to cultivate your spirit. Mm. Mine personally thrives on performing. I love teaching as well, but I miss it when I'm not doing it. It's been hard now, and that's why I've been trying to take classes yeah. to do that, to find ways to feed to feed that, um, whatever it may be. Um, and I think also 
that this business is a lot harder than even I expected. And I had realistic parents who believed in me and supported me, but they never, they never made me, f they were my biggest supporters at literally every performance I've ever done. They're always there, but they also were real about what this business would be like. And they're, they so have always supported me, but they're like, just so you know, you're, it's not going to be, you're not gonna be doing the things your friends are doing who are not in theater. It's gonna be, you're gonna have a harder time and it's even harder than I was prepared for. And there's so many other things that go into casting and networking that um, are so out of your control, luck of the draw. Like it's just, it's so much more competitive and harder than, than even I was prepared for. So you really need to have resiliency and you need to focus on, one of the things I learned about most of all was letting go of booking the audition and just mm. focusing on booking the room so that oh, I go in and that's like a new mindset for me because I was getting like hung up and I was going into auditions for, I had a year where it was like really, I was putting so much pressure on myself to book this role that I was not doing my best work. I was going in and, and, mm. and they could, those casting, these top casting people can feed off of that fear, that anxiety. So yeah. I really tried to focus on now just booking the room and, and no matter what work I'm doing, finding joy in it, remembering why that five-year-old little girl wanted to be an actor in the first place. It wasn't for all these other, yes, of course, ultimately you need to make money, you need to survive, you need to be able to do those things. But I try to find joy, even if it's an audition, if it's a read, whatever it may be, even if it's teaching and exposing, helping to cultivate young kids similar love with theater. I just try to find joy in those moments and remember why, always remind myself, why did I do this? Why did I want to be an actor? It was because it made me happy. And I, I want to share that joy. So I think that that's been a hard, it's a thing, you know, as you get a little bit older and uh, you get a little more perspective and you live a little bit more, you realize what's really important. And I'm trying to, to focus on that joy and keep, yeah. it helps me. That's great. And I think when you, when you have that, uh, you, you, it sounds like you're really talking about purpose. You know, what's, mm -hmm. what's the purpose behind what you're doing? So if it's that that joy, really, uh, you know, locking into that. I love what you said too about booking the room, um, you know, and tying that too into the connections. It's it's just so important. I mean, I think uh, you know to then support that comment with the fact of just how often you and I have worked together. Um, you know, the other folks I'm going to talk to. I mean, we've uh, I've had relationships with them. Uh, for for just as long, um, you know, Tim Reagan is one. I mean, I've, I've, yeah. he's, he's I just, I I can book him anywhere because um, I know that he's gonna. Uh, I, I know what he could do, and you know, we just we just have that connection, that working connection. Mm -hmm. um, and I love too that, that they uh, they they booked you after all those years with the the black and white headshot. That's a great. It's, and and <laughs> and that's Remember something. Now. Uh, I just took an online seminar with uh, Tulsi yesterday, and they were talking about mm -hmm. um that legit that happened they have casting meetings every morning he's like and you may not be right for the per thing that this person on my team is casting but they could come in and say hey i really like this person they didn't fit this you should consider them for this so it really it's uh, yeah. it's really happens it's important um and it's important to always have that positive energy about it because that's why people are going to want to work with you mm -hmm. definitely and, and you know um just thinking too of uh the young people i teach you know the uh, the, the fear is always I think the biggest hurdle and maybe, maybe, maybe one piece of advice that they could take away from this conversation is that idea of you just, you just keep going and um, focus on the fact that you may not be right for that one moment, but that doesn't mm -hmm. mean that you're not right for anything. Um, I, a lot of times when we're young too, it, it just think in general, we just have that such a narrow idea of what the world is. Um, so, yeah. And, and you know, let's, let's kind of, well, go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to say my, my, my dear mentor from Montclair state, uh, Dr. Suzanne Trout always says to me, like when I'm getting frustrated, she goes, you just got to keep doing the work Tara. And I yeah. said, well, you know, I'm not this and this. And she goes, you just got to keep doing the work. You got to keep doing the work and uh, things are going to come together. You're, you're she's like, you're doing good work. As long as you're doing great work, that's all you got to keep doing. So got to keep moving forward with it. So I, I try to keep that in my mind too. That's great. Very good. Um, and with that, you know, one of the things I, I wanted to wrap up with, I think we've kind of touched on it, but if there's anything else too, any advice you would give to young people out there ages eight to 18 is typically where I look, but you were five when you, you first got interested. So, I mean, you know, young people who are just getting started or just thinking about uh, getting involved in, in the theater or even just anything creative. I mean, is there one thing you might really pass along to them from what you've learned? 
<laughs> well, I could give you the bit of advice that my mom gave me from the time I was a little girl. And she would say to me, Tara Jane, you can do anything you want as long as you set your mind to it and you're willing to work for it. And, uh, you know, obviously she was talking, she recognized my skill talents from a young age and, and cultivated in that way. But um, I think there's a lot of truth in that. I think that if you love something, if you're good at it, and most importantly, as my grandmother would say, the most important thing is that it makes you happy. If you're, if you find happiness in that, because above all else, we want to be happy people. Um, and that is a blessing in life. It's not, it's not a guarantee. It sadly, I don't think I wish it was for all people. And I, I wish that for anyone listening, I wish you health and happiness because that is the most important thing in life is to be, to be, to live a happy, a happy life. And whatever that may be that you do, that makes you happy. And if you're like, um, both Jim and myself, whether through teaching and the arts and acting and performing, if your work can make others happy, that's the icing on the cake to me. And I, and that's one of the things I love most about theater is that the thing that I, the thing, not person, but the thing that I love most in the, this world can make other people happy is, um, it's a blessing and I, and, I'm, and I hold on to that gratitude every day. Every day that I get to use my gifts that I've been given and cultivated, I, I, I'm very grateful for that, that I, that I can do that. So I, I would just say, um, find something you love and pursue it and uh, just keep working hard and know that, that things are not gonna always be easy, but it's the hard times that make us stronger, that make us better and can ultimately lead us to these new futures and possibilities we never would have imagined if we perhaps hadn't gone through those hardships. So, and I wish you wellness and happiness, everyone. Stay safe. I know it's, it's, a, it's a tough time, but don't lose hope. That's uh, another thing my mother always, always impressed upon me is that you have to have hope. It's important, so. Absolutely, yeah. It's, when there's nothing else, at least have that. That's, that's great. Thank you so much for that. Of course. And thanks for thanks for talking with me in the, for the first uh, the first conversation. Ah, I'm 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 so honored, Jim. It's a pleasure as always. I I I, I am so grateful that you found me in my college showcase and that we've had all this <laughs> wonderful times uh, to work together in so many facets. You you've uh, enriched my life as a person and as a performer too. So I'm very grateful for all the ways you've you've guided me as an artist and uh, impressed uh, impressed so much wisdom on me. It's I'm I'm very lucky to have had this professional relationship together yeah i well thank you for that and i you know i'll just i'll echo the same it's 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 always been it's been great to work with you you know and, and uh, you know, you're one of those folks i can always reach out to um we always seem to find our way you know back to to me to working with each other um you know even if it's the the surprise on the on the ball field <laughs> on the ball field yeah. talked about before um you know um or uh having you pop up on our tv screen you know our kids yes. love, uh, buddy and duff uh, you know, cake uh competition you mentioned uh, which i think is episode three of buddy and duff two if yes it is it's that. on there you can you can check it out uh they, they made yeah. some pretty impressive creations so. they really did and, and i i gotta tell you it was um it was great to to see you there and i think i told you when, when it happened and my i wasn't in the room my family was screaming you have to get in here you have to get in here <laughs> and your your reaction to the cakes and everything that was happening was just was just great so it just it was it was a lot of fun to um to see you there and, and thank uh, you it was a lot of fun to do yeah so thanks again for talking to me I, I'm, I look forward to when we can all get out of our houses and, and maybe connect in person and, and work together again likewise be well right. thank you you too take care bye, -bye.